How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be speaking about Manchester United and how WhatsApp is helping them through the coronavirus. We're going to be speaking about Daniel Levy at Spurs because he's taken a 20% pay cut and we're also going to be speaking about UEFA because today they are holding a meeting with all the European sides to see what actually will happen with this season. I represent my fucking self. How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is Manchester United. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been talking about how WhatsApp, amongst other things, is helping Manchester United with the coronavirus pandemic. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has revealed how The Garden and WhatsApp are helping Manchester United deal with the lockdown and is even hoping the players' partners are doing their bit. I raised my eyebrows when I first see that bit, but he goes on to say, we're putting some crosses in. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they're doing. The 47-year-old Norwegian says it is largely business as usual as the squad battles to stay fit without any game time. The players have got individual programs and they have got their own diets, of course. And this period could be used to work on something special, something specific for them and their roles and tasks. I've been in the garden with the kids working on finishing and the strikers should be working on finishing or their movements. Most of the players have got good facilities and decent gardens, so hopefully their wives and girlfriends will be able to put some passes and crosses in. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's absolutely brilliant. I'm just picturing now all the Manchester United players, their wives running down the, the wing in the garden and pinging crosses in. <laughs> that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, with the coronavirus wiping out the Premier League until April the 30th at the earliest, Solskjaer has been keen to maintain morale within the squad who have been on an 11-match unbeaten run in all competition before the suspension of the season. I'm used to seeing them every day for hours and hours, so it's different, the former Manchester United striker was saying. I just keep in touch with them on WhatsApp groups and messages and we plan for whenever we get back and what kind of sessions for when we do start. That's the good thing now with technology and we're lucky in that sense. We can keep in touch and see each other. We can send messages and get a reply quickly and we can do the old-fashioned phone call sometimes and speak on the phone. So we keep in touch regular. Uh, Solskjaer has also taken part in being the teacher as part of his children's homeschooling program like millions of parents across the country. We did that last week when it started, and that's a bit different, he said. Homework is one thing, but doing the actual teaching. We managed to get through last week, but you never know how long this is going to last. But the kids have been very good. And um, yeah, that makes me smile and have a bit of a laugh because I know exactly where he's coming from in that sense and the teaching side of things and the children and everything else. And yeah, it's a bit um, unusual because, you know, we normally go out and work and everything else and myself as well. I'm so busy and out of the house most days and, you know, going off down to London and filming and other stuff that you don't really get to do all of that stuff all of the time. Um, so now you're at home, you get to see what the mums do all the time. And um, yeah, the teaching side of things, I'll tell you something, some of the stuff they're teaching children now, Wow, in comparison to my day, it's completely different, that's for sure. So, yeah, Manchester United are doing their bit um, to battle the uh, coronavirus and staying indoors and what they're going to do and how they're going to be ready for the start of the campaign, whenever that will be. Um, and that, of course, takes me on to the next subject because UEFA um, today are holding talks with Euro associations and what is on the agenda UEFA will hold talks with every European association um, to discuss the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, this is the first time all 55 national associations in Europe have joined the call since March the 17th, when they took the unprecedented decision to postpone 
this summer's European Championships by a year. UEFA has two working groups looking at everything from the football calendar to the financial impact of an unprecedented global pandemic. This is their opportunity to update the governing bodies of each country, including the associations of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. The video conference call is scheduled to last up to 90 minutes and will be chaired by UEFA president. No major decision is expected. It is thought that UEFA only announced details of this latest meeting because they knew details would emerge following several leaks during their last conference call. Um, what will happen to the Champions League and Europa League? UEFA's ambition remains to finish their competitions, even if it involves reducing quarterfinal and semi-final ties to one game over a neutral venue. In the Champions League, 12 clubs from five countries, England, France, Germany, Italy and Spain, are waiting to find out whether this season's competition will restart. So that's an interesting one. Um, goes down to one game. Hmm. Don't know how I feel about that. Not that it bothers us because we're not in it. Um, are you a for moving towards cancelling the season? None of us are in control, concedes one UEFA insider, but we have to plan for further dates. There is a determination to finish this season and June the 30th remains the preferred deadline for Europe's leagues and competitions. But finishing the season in July and possibly later will also be discussed. So that's an interesting one. Um, I don't think they're going to move that deadline yet of June the 30th, but they're also going to look at putting contingency plans in there if that deadline has not been met. Uh, will the transfer window be discussed? Yes. And will the issue of player contracts? Uh, but UEFA will be guided by FIFA's working group on these difficult issues. Every association will have their own preference and there is no quick fix. So, again, this is one of the real tough ones. Player contracts and everything else. Um, Players out of contracts, are they allowed to carry on, stay there? Are you allowed to take someone that, you know, might be out on loan and the season's effectively finished, but it ain't? Weird. Really, really weird. Um, so, yeah, that meeting is going to be a very interesting one today. And um, I don't think we're going to get any major decisions like they were saying, but we might be a little bit clearer in terms of contingency plans and what they're going to do if deadlines are not met, um, especially that one on June the 30th, because that's the date that they all seem to be mentioning as the cut-off point. But it's interesting to see here that they're saying that they might even discuss going further than that. So, um, yeah, interesting one. Um, last piece of news involves Spurs chairman Daniel Levy and he is one of 550 non-playing staff at Tottenham taking a pay cut to protect jobs amid the crisis. Spurs have also followed Newcastle and Furloin, a scheme in which an employee does not work but gets 80% of their salary paid for the next two months by the government. Um, some staff were appropriate. In a clear sign that Spurs are feeling the bite of the financial crisis brought on by the pandemic, Levy paid £7 million for the season 2018-19 and others will take a 20% cut to their salaries. Oh, it's nice of Daniel Levy to take 20% off £7 million. <sighs> Such a hard life, isn't it? Um, the club's 2018-19 accounts published on Companies House showed the chairman earned a £3 million bonus for delivering the club's new 62000 See a stadium on top of his annual four million salary. It's as big as belief, doesn't it? The club's operations have effectively ceased. Some of our fans will have lost their jobs and most will be worried about their future. Our sponsors will be concerned about their businesses and our media partners have no certainty when we may play games again or whether we be allowed to play in front of our fans. In the meantime, the club has an annual cost base running into hundreds of millions of pounds. We have seen some of the biggest clubs in the world, such as Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Juventus, take steps to reduce their costs. 
Um, and of course, yesterday's show, I was speaking about Barcelona and every single player has taken um, a huge cut in their wages and everything else. Um, Levy's statement addressed the potential for a similar scenario um, to what I was saying about Barcelona. Um, and he was saying that he hopes the current discussions between the Premier League, PFA and LMA will result in players and coaches doing their bit for the football ecosystem. Um, so no real clear indication as to whether Spurs players are going to take a wage cut. It'd be nice if players all got together as a group and done something. But I suppose there's a lot of um, T's to cross and I's to dot in terms of certain things. And you heard the complications that Barcelona were having and what Lionel Messi was saying. So... Um, interesting, but yeah, Daniel Levy earned £7 million last year and he's got to take a 20% cut. Such a shame, isn't it? Um, so yeah, there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. Um, as usual, let me know in the comments section what you think of today's topics. Um, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.